Welcome to the information session for the Chinatown Road Mural. This meeting is being translated live into Cantonese, Mandarin, American Sign Language, and it was originally prepared in English. Let's start with a land acknowledgement. Go ahead, Julie. Thank you, Chelsea. Um, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the ancestral territories the, of the indigenous people of Treaty 7, that Nitsitapi include the Siksika, Pigani, Kainai, collectively known as the Blackfoot Confederacy. I would also like to acknowledge the Sutina First Nation, as well as the Chiniki, Bears Paw, and Wesley Bands of the Stony Nakoda First Nation. This land is also home to the people of the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3, and there are many other First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples from across Turtle Island who call Calgary or Mokinstis home. Thank you. I am the lead presenter from Calgary Arts Development Authority. We usually go by just uh, our first name, Calgary Arts Development, so that's Kata. And I'm the Public Art Projects Manager. Go ahead, Julie. And I am Julie Apishna Geller. I am the City of Calgary uh, Public Art Liaison. And so my job is to be the connector uh, between the City of Calgary and CADA Public Art Programs. So for the purpose of this project, I'll be working closely with the successful artist and CADA to ensure that we're connected in with City of Calgary initiatives in the Chinatown area and to help navigate city processes to get this project implemented. If you have any questions uh, about this project um, between now and the deadline uh, for submissions, you can email publicart at calgary.ca. Next slide. Today's presentation will last for about 30 minutes. Then we will break for five minutes. We'll finish with a question and answer period. The question and answer period won't be on the video recording, but we will share a PDF of the questions and answers. You can learn to expect, uh, sorry, you can expect to learn more about the partnership on this project between Calgary Arts Development and the City of Calgary. In the presentation, you'll hear a summary of the project and the information in the call to artists. After the project summary, you will see examples of road murals and learn about the design considerations for this particular location in Calgary. Finally, we will review instructions for submitting an application and we will describe the selection process. A question and answer period will close the session. Until the next slide. Calgary Arts Development was announced as the new operator for Calgary's public art program in March, 2021. The city of Calgary and Calgary Arts Development are working together to gradually transition over the course of three years, the operations of the program, including community programming, calls for artists, community engagement, and the procurement of new public art. Full transition will be complete in 2024. As an example of this transition, the Chinatown Road Mural Call to Artists is a collaborative effort between both organizations. We will continue to work together into the future. In case you are wondering about the Municipal Public Art Collection, the city will continue to own conserve, and also maintain that collection. Volcado will have a role in adding to it and creating opportunities related to engagement around new and existing pieces. On to the next slide. Here's a bit more about Calgary Arts Development or CADA. We are the city's designated arts development authority. Calgary Arts Development supports and strengthens the arts to benefit all Calgarians. We invest in, we invest and allocate municipal funding for the arts provided by the City of Calgary. 
and leverage these funds to provide additional resources to the arts sector. Our programs support hundreds of organizations, individual artists, artist collectives, and groups in Calgary. On the next slide, Julie will speak about the Chinatown Road Mural Project. Thanks, Chelsea. Um, so a little bit about the project. Um, the city of Calgary has several flood mitigation and construction projects that are underway right now between Chinatown, Eau Claire, and along the Bow River. These projects are aimed at improving the connections between Eau Claire and Chinatown and are going to add to the vibrancy of this area. Through the city's work with the Chinatown community, the idea of the road mural came up as a temporary initiative intended to add visual interest to the area while encouraging, while encouraging motorists, cyclists, pedestrians, and other users of the space to slow down, take in their surroundings, and enjoy the area. Next slide. So just to give you a little bit of context uh, about the project and the area. As you're likely aware, Chinatown is one of Calgary's most distinctive cultural communities, but it has a long and complex history that started way before this area became the Chinatown we know today. The area on which Chinatown was developed sits on Treaty 7 territory. The Bow and Elbow Rivers were important encampment areas for Indigenous people, as shown in the images on this slide. So the image on the right is the present day CN Lock Park, and the image on the left shows a Blackfoot encampment in that same location in the early 1900s. Um, and we know through archaeological findings that this area was important to Indigenous people for some 12,000 years before that. I'd just like to add one more note um, about Chinatown uh, and the history and uh, how we got to where we are today. So the city's history includes two previous Chinatowns that were displaced. The first was displaced from a fire and the second by the Canadian Northern Railway to build the Palliser Hotel. So this current Chinatown is the third uh, in Calgary's history and was established in its present location in 1910. Uh, today, Chinatown is going through a revitalization, both physically through the area redevelopment plan and the Tomorrow's Chinatown initiative, and culturally, through the culture plan, which aims to improve quality of life, cultural resources, and strengthen the area's economy. So there's a ton of history and culture in this area that can inspire the artistic concept for the road mural. Okay, next slide. So, Location. Um, the road mural will be located in Chinatown on 3rd Avenue Southeast between Center Street and 1st Street Southeast. Uh, for those of you, for those of you familiar with the area, this is a highly visible location with heavy pedestrian, cyclist and vehicle traffic. Julie, am I on the right slide for you? Uh, no, you're, okay. you're one Sorry. ahead. There we go. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, the road is bordered by a variety of local businesses, offices, and residential buildings that offer bird's eye views of the roadway where the mural will be.
There's also an opportunity for artists to consider the various points from which people will view and interact the road mural. So from the street level, in passing from the roadway and sidewalks and from above from the buildings that overlook the road. Okay, next slide to goals. So here's what we're looking for uh, in terms of what we hope this project will accomplish. We would like for this project to reflect the past, present, or future of the Chinatown community. Uh, we'd like the artist to consider the historical and present day context of the location and the variety of cultural communities represented. And finally, we're looking for the artist to create visual interest and encourage pedestrians, motorists, and cyclists, and other roadway users to slow down and explore the community through its art. Go ahead, Chelsea. On the next slide, I'll be speaking about eligibility. And just a reminder, uh, if you have any questions, they're best put to all people in the chat or to Ophelia directly, who is the question and answer moderator. I know there was a question sent to me, but I'm having problems answering it. So uh, too many things going on. So on to eligibility. This is listed in the first page of the call to artists. Experience creating outdoor murals is an asset, but not mandatory. This opportunity is open to local professional artists with connections to the Chinatown area. You'll have to describe to us what you feel are your connections, be they cultural, because you know the area, because you've grown up nearby. There's so many ways to describe connections. We do not def define what local means. When deciding if you are local, keep in mind that the budget does not support extensive travel and accommodation fees. And we expect that the artist will be on site and in the neighborhood quite a bit. On the next slide, Julie will describe some key dates. So the schedule for this project is quite fast. Um, so I'll just go through the dates right now. So the submission deadline is 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on Monday, January 31st, 2022. Um, we'll be shortlisting and doing the artist selection in February. Uh, public engagement will begin basically immediately throughout February and March, 2022. Um, and concept development will overlap with the public engagement and will be ongoing until May, 2022, with the project completion scheduled for June, 2022. So as I said, the schedule is very fast and that's because we're working around other construction activities that are planned for the area and also because the community would like to be able to enjoy the road mural for as long as possible throughout the summer. To be considered for the design commission, it's crucial that the artist or artist team be available between March and June. And of course, uh, we'll determine an exact schedule uh, once the artist or artist team is commissioned. Next slide, Chelsea. Once an artist is contracted, which is as soon as late February, 2022, the artist will work with the project team to refine the schedule and to understand the constraints that they must design within. 
The project team includes the project lead from CADA, the City of Calgary, Public Art Liaison, CADA's Engagement Liaison, an advisor from Roads and Transportation, and also the Mural Installers. To start with, the artist will develop a research engagement plan, starting with information that is available from the project team. The artist plan should relate to the artistic approach, generally, as an artist. <laughs> then, the artist will share their mural concept for review with the project team and key stakeholders. Next, the artist will proceed with a design, uh, sorry, develop design and installation plan in coordination with the project team and installers. There is an option for the artist to help with installation for a budget of up to $2,500. Next, Tony Churchill from the City of Calgary Roads and Transportation Department will speak about the technical considerations. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Tony Churchill and I'm a traffic engineer with the City of Calgary. And I'm happy to speak with you about the technical considerations for this project. The artist or artist team should be prepared to work within technical constraints as outlined by the City of Calgary in compliance with Transportation Association of Canada and provincial road safety guidelines. At a high level, these include the colors used, yellow, white, and red as primary background colors are restricted. They can be used, but not as the primary background color. For visuals, the, um, the art cannot resemble traffic control or warning devices. If Chinese characters are used, uh, they cannot represent or resemble traffic control instructions for motorists. Um, we will be happy to work with the artist um, and all imagery will be subject to review by the City of Calgary for safety purposes. The area of roadway available for painting is shown on this slide. The sidewalks and parking areas are not considered part of the available painting area. The total area of paintable roadway is approximately 507 square meters. Um, the distances available are shown and the lane widths are approximately 3.5 meters. I will be staying on and happy to answer any questions and look forward to working with the artist or artist team on this project. Next slide, please. The next part of the presentation is a quick look at some examples that vary in size, detail, coverage, and also color. I'm showing you these examples for context of road murals. These are not meant to be inspirations or guides for what we are asking an artist to do for this location in Chinatown in Calgary. Road murals need to achieve balance between many factors, their own artistic vision, community needs or desires, the budget, the type of paint, the age and type of concrete surface, and of course, safety.
So the first example on the next slide is Chen Dongfan's mural on Doyer Street in Chinatown, New York City. It's seen in these images from street view and from a bird's eye view. The mural installation happened over weeks. It took a long time. A multi-week road closure prevented garbage truck access, which of course led to community backlash. The next murals to be painted on Doyer Street were done much more quickly. The artwork size is 200 feet long and covers an area of 4,800 square feet. The artist's design was very detailed, with lots of specialized mark making and many colors. These techniques with the need for dry time between, between paint coats and perhaps even some weather disruptions, that could be some of the reason for the long installation period. Here's another example from New York City's Chinatown, uh, Doyer Street. Road murals are temporary, and on rare occasions when there is funding, they may get repainted every few years as they have been on Doyer Street. This mural by Dasik Fernandez is entitled Rice Terraces. This project is in contrast to the city, to this Calgary Chinatown call, because we don't have funding or commitment for additional repainting of this area in Calgary. Compared to the previous example, which took weeks, this installation happened only over three and a half days and it had 44 colors. The bottom left image shows paint application using rollers. The artist designed the mural to be painted quickly, which led to limited road closure time. Keep in mind, this road mural in Calgary's Chinatown is a temporary project with no plan to repaint it. On the next slide, our third example is called Stripe Street by Rise Farrell, located right here in Calgary at Deerfoot City. Like the last two murals, this artist designed a high coverage mural using paint all over the surface. As you view these images, keep in mind they were taken to showcase bright, shiny new murals. But they will wear quickly when the road is used by vehicles and snow removal equipment. Also, weather and debris affect the longevity, the color, and the appearance. Murals on roadways in our climate in Alberta are temporary, with lifespans between one or five years, depending on various factors. On the next slide, these images from Cochrane show a single color road mural of the town logo in an intersection in 2015, and on the right, a view from 2021. Paint on pavement is subject to wear and tear due to vehicles, weathering, and color. The color fades due to constant exposure to the elements and road maintenance, including snow removal, and the use of salts or gravels. So unless a road mural is reapplied, we can expect it to wear away and fade unevenly. On our next example, this is an Alberta example by Al uh, Nicole Wolf. It's a mural on asphalt, where we see the artist has used the asphalt material itself as negative space. A design that showcases the pavement or road surface can be impactful, and it could extend over a larger area. With some possible benefits, including cost savings in material and labor, 
or even shorter installation times. However, small details require time and skill, and that must be considered when budgeting for the installation of a design. Our next example are, um, is the final slide of examples. These are two parking lots in Calgary, which were launched in 2020. The image on the right shows High Park, an upper level parking surface painted in the Beltline neighborhood. On the left, we see Park Park in Inglewood. In both examples, bold blocks of color create a huge impact in a large area. If we compare these designs to the previous examples, we see a great impact from a simple design over a large area using only four or five colors. So on the next slide, I want to uh, summarize what we saw in the examples. An artist needs to align their artistic vision with community engagement and community needs. Also with the budget, ensuring that the artist, community consultants, installers, and suppliers are paid for their contributions. They should align their artistic vision with audience viewpoints and installer capabilities. Keeping in mind methods of duration, um, sorry, methods and duration of installation while considering wear and tear, and of course, safety. The artist or artist team who is selected for this project is sure to identify even more considerations. Moving on, application instructions are listed in the call to artists. Your submission package should include a letter of interest with your resume and CV or curriculum vitae with up to 10 images and an image list. This package should be less than 10 megabytes and be emailed to publicart.calgary.ca. If you have accessibility issues, there are some further directions in the call to artists and you may inquire about translation or submitting in another option besides email. Read the call to artists and refer to it often as you prepare your documents. Focus your submission on the evaluation criteria. I'll go over that in the next uh, part of the presentation. You may notice that there's no request for concepts or proposals in the submission package. That is because we ask that the selected artist develop a concept that is well informed through research and community engagement, through, re through meetings with the project team, and also site visits. In other words, we want to pay an artist for a well informed concept not obtain preliminary concepts for free. For artist teams, there are special directions. Uh, check out the call to artists. The team should identify everyone's role, their time commitment, and where the members are based. When it comes to evaluation criteria, this is listed in the call to artists. I suggest you read it carefully as I will not go through it in detail right now. The evaluation criteria includes your understanding of the project, your project experience, your artistic practice, and your public art experience. The selection committee will review all of the submission packages and score each submission based only upon this criteria. On the next slide, 
Here's a tip for you. Think of each criteria point as a question that you need to answer with the combination of your letter, image, and resume or CV. Sorry, I should have said images there, your, your uh, supporting images and the image list. So what do I mean by a question? Let's look at this criteria point stating knowledge of or connection to the project's place. This would become the question, what is your knowledge or connection to this project's place? Keep in mind, your website and other links are not part of your submission package. So you must be clear, demonstrate how you suit the criteria in your images, your letter and your resume or CV. On the next slide, I'll review the selection process. The selection panel will be scoring your files from their laptops or computers. As well, during the selection committee, there may be images shown over Zoom. So we ask you to submit images that are suited to the screen. In selection meeting one, the highest scored applicants will be discussed and considered for the shortlist. In selection meeting two, interviews are a time for the selection panel to better understand which shortlisted artists score the highest according to the evaluation criteria. This ends the formal part of the presentation. Thank you so much for attending. And a big thanks to the interpreters and everyone who contributed to this session. Questions can be sent to publicart at calgary.ca. And remember, the deadline is 5 p.m. on January 31st.